vlogmas vlog. Today is Sunday the 6th of December and as has been the case with every single day of December so far, I kickstarted my day with my tea advent calendar. But today is a Sunday and I teach a few yoga classes on Sunday morning so this morning I filmed myself opening the calendar but I was in too much of a rush to start the vlog properly so without further ado, here is what I got for my tea advent calendar this morning going back to Kira from quite a few hours ago. So this morning's tea, Sunday the 6th of December, is chamomile flowers and I must admit I was a little bit disappointed when I opened today's door because chamomile tea isn't like a general choice for me. Those types of like really mild calming teas usually seem to taste just like hot water and I think if you're going to just drink something that tastes like hot water you might as well save yourself the money of buying the tea bag and just drink hot water. But Try not to judge it prematurely because I haven't actually tasted it yet and you know, not every day can be a chai tea day. So without further ado, this tea does really, really smell like um, hay. We have two rabbits, you might not know that, but Jay and I have two rabbits and this smells a lot like the hay that we put in their cage, which I'm not sure is what I'm looking for from tea, but either way, let's give it a try. Ah. Hot water. <laughs> Is it? <clears throat> Doesn't really taste of anything. Yeah. Really doesn't taste of anything in particular, which is fine because I like hot water, but it's just not what, like if I'm having a tea, I want it to have like a distinctive flavor that makes it different from other drinks. And this one just tastes like hot water to me, but cheers. And now back to the present day. It is now Sunday afternoon. I've done all of my jobs for the day, which means I have a Sunday afternoon of pure relaxation ahead of me, which just sounds wonderful. And I thought I would kick off this vlog with a little bit of an unboxing. I usually start my vlogs by telling you what I'm either currently reading or plan to read, but today I have no idea because I'm currently sat with this box or parcel from Amazon. Me and my friend M from the channel A Little Writer M decided to do a random book swap. So I sent a book to M that she is currently reading and then she sent this book to me and I have no idea what it is, but this is the book that I'm gonna be reading throughout this reading vlog. So without further ado, let's find out what I'm gonna be reading. It's a hardback. Ooh. Writers and lovers, who did I see? Oh, I saw Noelle Gallagher talking about this in a vlog, I'm sure I did. And she seemed to really like it, what's it about? Casey has ended up in Massachusetts after a devastating love affair. Her mother has just died and she is knocked sideways by grief and loneliness, moving between the restaurant where she waitresses um, for the Harvard elite and the rented shed she calls home. Her one constant is the novel she's been writing for six years, but at 31 she is in debt, and directionless and feels too old to be that way. It's strange not being the youngest kind of adult anymore. And then one evening she meets Silas. He is kind, handsome, interested. But only a few weeks later, Oscar walks into her restaurant, his two boys in tow. He is older, grieving the loss of his wife and wrapped up in his own creativity. Suddenly Casey finds herself at the point of a love triangle, torn between two very different relationships that promise two very different futures. That sounds so good and like the literary fiction that I have been craving because the last book I read was a romance that was very, very average. It was The Love Square and I was talking about that in my last couple of vlogs, but I've kind of been craving something that does the same types of things as normal people, but basically anything that Sally Rooney writes or Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine or The Truants and that kind of thing. And this book sounds like it could do that. So a very good choice. Thank you, Em. I'm very excited to read this starting today because I think it's going to be really really good. That is the first thing I've been unboxing and then second of all I have this wonderful pink parcel. Now this is actually I know a selection of scrunchies from a wonderful person called Charlotte. Charlotte has her own Etsy shop and Instagram called Belle by Lulu where she makes like handmade scrunchies and I absolutely have 
the most incredibly massive mop of hair and so taming it with scrunchies is so important because scrunchies just seem a little bit kinder especially to my curly hair than like um thin bubbles do and so i was so excited when she offered to send me some of those so they have been gifted and i thought that i would unbox them here on camera so without further ado let's dive into it so we have three separate packages Oh, they are so beautifully wrapped. So this is how they arrive. That is so cute. Wow. Oh my God, look, it's a little fox. Oh my God, I love them. I love it, this is so cute. So we have this little one, which is little foxes on like a navy blue print. We have this super cute one, which is strawberries. And then this one, which I think is really nice, um, a like pink and white stripe one. So that is in the first package. Then we have, oh my God, I'm never gonna need to buy another hair bubble or scrunchie ever again. Literally, this is so, so kind of you. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Ooh, these ones are cute. These are like little um, geisha prints. They look super cute. I'm definitely probably gonna share these with Jay's little sister, Heidi, because she is way cooler than me and has like a lot of cool different outfits and she wears things that are a little bit more outgoing than I do. And I think that she will definitely enjoy some of these prints. And I have another package. Oh my God, Charlotte is so kind to have sent all of these things. But the reason I'm showing you them now is because of course it is the run up to Christmas. And I think given the current circumstances, it would just be so nice to be able to support small businesses. And if that's something that you have been considering, then I will be leaving the link to her Etsy shop, Bell by Lulu, in the description down below so you can check it out. And of course, go and support a small business because these are so cute. <gasps> Some spooky ones spiders and skeletons wow amazing uh, and the packaging is just so cute i absolutely love it Ooh, these ones are like um silky which is meant to be really good for curly hair i think so these will be perfect for me especially if i just want to like wrap my hair up at night time and then the final package oh my god what a sweetheart. She sent me some little love heart sweets, which are vegan. Wow. This one says, let's party. <laughs> wow. Charlotte did say to mention as well that she does only unfortunately ship in the UK. So if you are outside of the UK, sadly, you won't be able to get these lovely scrunchies. But if you are in the UK, and like I said, you want to support a small business at Christmas time, then I would definitely recommend going and checking out her Etsy shop because wow, these all look incredible. I think my personal favorite has got to be the little foxy one because it's just so cute. But yeah, there's a little unboxing to kick off the Vlogmas third vlog, Vlogmas day six. And without further ado, I'm gonna go and enjoy an afternoon of chilling out and probably eating more of those Love Heart sweets, which are such a blast from the past and so delicious. Wow, I look tired today. <laughs> but good morning, guys. It is the 7th of December. It's first thing in the morning. I've just gotten out of bed and you know the drill, so. Here's the tea vent calendar. Um, <laughs> let's find door number seven. There it is, finally. Number seven, let's go in. Trim metallic. 
metabolism tea. Tea pigs, you don't have to have words. That sounds like a friggin' detox tea. This is a yummy combination of peach, rose hip, and hibiscus. The active ingredient in this blend is garuana seed from the Amazon basin. This little seed looks rather odd when it's grown. Look it up. But it is known to give your metabolism an almighty, all natural boost. Okay, I'll let them off. Mm -hmm. So this is basically just sounds like a um, fruity tea that may or may not boost your metabolism, but obviously that is not why I drink tea. Either way, let's go and find out what this blend of apple, licorice root, hibiscus, and rose hip and peach tastes like. Okay, tea has been brewed. It honestly has a very, very, very mild smell, which is making me think it's probably gonna have a even milder flavor because often ones that have a really, really strong smell still taste very mild. So this might just be another hot water day. Oh, actually, can't quite put my finger on that, but like weirdly, That actually tastes more peachy than the peach and mango tea did. Hmm, yeah, that's quite nice. It's like a peach and apple-y flavour. Surprisingly nice. Maybe I judged prematurely. Although I still stand by the fact that any tea that says it's metabolism boosting is trying to trick people and just should stop. Call it a peach and apple tea instead. Well, 
on balance that tea was actually a little bit nicer than I expected although definitely not a flavour that I would like personally choose but it was definitely better and more flavourful than I expected so I can't judge it too harshly but like I said it is now Monday and Jay and I are both not in work today we've booked days off because we want to do our Christmas shopping we have tried to do most of it online but there's just some things that you kind of need to go into shops to find so we thought that we would go on a Monday rather than on the weekend because hopefully town will be a little bit less busy and I'm so excited to go into town because I haven't been since like October I think and I have been missing Pret so much so I have a date with Pret waiting for me in town. shopping was a semi success got quite a few things still have a fair few things to get but we are rewarding ourselves with oh with Pret sadly Pret are not doing chai lattes anymore or at least not for the festive period which I was kind of gutted about but I do have an oat milk salted caramel latte mine's terrible <laughs> mine which is, is terrible. nice and Jay got a gingerbread latte that he's upset about why the cream's gone already the picture showed the cream out the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I mean, I've not even had any of the cream and it's already halfway down. Just there. taste the latte, for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> you big baby. It's nice, isn't it? It is quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> you big drama queen. I like to eat the cream.
morning guys, it is now Tuesday and today I have dug out my most festive jumper. It's only the 8th of December so I'm wondering whether I've like pulled this one out too early in the month but I'm about to film a Christmas tree read with me where I'm going to sit by the sparkly Christmas tree lights and do some reading. That video will actually be up before this vlog so if you do want to have a festive reading session with me for 30 minutes then I'll link that video so you can go and check it out but I wanted to look as festive as possible. But I still need to make myself look semi-presentable because my hair is wild and my face is, looks like I just got out of bed because I did. So I'm gonna make my festive cup of tea from my tea calendar, get ready while I watch an episode of Made in Chelsea and then film the video. So without further ado, let's do here's the tea. I'm hoping for just like a regular tea. I don't want something fruity, I don't want something herbal, I just want something nice. So, you know, like I don't mind those teas, but if I have too many of them in a row, then I start to get a little bit sad. Okay, here is the eighth. Let's jump in. Jinxed it, didn't I? Mao Feng green tea. If you enjoy the benefits of green tea, I don't know what the benefits of green tea are, but hate the taste, this is perfect for you. It has a delicate natural flavor of summer air, peaches and apricots. Unlike most murky brown standard green teas, this one turns a clear pale green when infused. Well, I guess I'm having a green tea. At least I can have it with um, an episode of Made in Chelsea because Made in Chelsea is on a Monday night, so now it's Tuesday. I can watch it with ketchup, eat some breakfast, hopefully enjoy this green tea and um, get ready to film a festive read with me video. So let's go make a green tea. Now, when I read the description of this tea and it said like peach and apricot notes, my first thought was, tea pigs, you are lying because it's green tea. Like, is it really gonna have peachy or apricot notes? Probably not. And it just kind of sounded like they were trying to jazz it up and make it sound fancier than it was. However, it does actually smell quite nice. So I might be about to eat or rather drink my words, but let's give it a taste. So this is a Mao Feng green tea. Just felt like that meme of the girl trying kombucha where she's like you know what that's actually not bad it's like a very subtle flavor but it's quite refreshing this is going in the category of teas that I would never probably choose myself because like you know I enjoy ones that you can have with like oat milk or that are slightly more spicy or like sweet and flavorful and this one is a very delicate flavor but it is refreshing so going in the category of teas I would probably never choose for myself however if someone else handed it to me and said here's a tea I wouldn't be disgusted at it and I would probably drink it. <laughs> Now time for the most important part of my Tuesday morning. I'm gonna eat my delicious yogurt, granola and fruit breakfast and watch Made in Chelsea. Well, I just finished filming my festive read with me by the Christmas tree. I'm still reading Writers and Lovers and I am lovering it. It is really, really interesting. I'm now on page 56. This one has just over 300 pages. So I'm still very much at the beginning of this book, but it is looking like it's gonna be a really interesting one because basically everything about the main characters 
life is complicated. It feels like she is definitely at like a low point of her life because everything just feels like it's not going her way. She is a writer but her writing project, her novel, isn't really going to plan. Her romantic situation is very complex. Her mum recently passed away. Her living situation is complex. She's working a job as a waitress that she doesn't really like and basically although she seems like a clever and intelligent character who has a lot of potential, things just don't seem to be going too well for her and yet it doesn't feel like a book that is complicated for the sake of it. I say that because the last book I read, The Love Square, which I was talking about in my last couple of vlogs, was a romance book, obviously definitely more lighthearted than this one, but it was a book where this main character had three different love interests, which is actually quite similar to this main character, who has just come out of a long-term, or not a long-term relationship, but she's just come out of a relationship with the guy that she still really is a bit obsessed with, and then she ends up meeting two other guys. So in terms of the romantic plot line, I guess there's definitely some similarities between these two books, but in the Love Square, it felt like the situations between these relationships were just being made complicated for the sake of furthering the plot and making it fit the prerequisite of being part of a love square and it just didn't really feel very natural or didn't really have like a flow that felt believable to me whereas in this one so far obviously I'm not a huge amount into the book but so far 56 pages in this book feels like a really authentic exploration of a complicated life rather than one that has just been made that way just to fit a particular plot or narrative and so I'm really liking it definitely excited to read more but for now I'm actually just waiting for Jade to get home because we're going to go to the gym together but I think I might quickly make a cup of tea have a mince pie because I got a mince pie from Pret yesterday their mince pies are vegan this year which I was so happy about and I think I might watch Zoe Sugg's vlogmas from yesterday because I have not watched that yet it is now Wednesday morning and oh my god was it difficult to get out of bed this morning. I feel like the first lockdown properly destroyed my sleep schedule and I just have never recovered basically. I've always been like a proper early riser, like six o'clock in the morning was no problem at all and staying up late was always really difficult but I think all of the late night TikTok sessions of lockdown one were just like enough to completely knock my schedule off balance and then since like being back to working from home and not having to get up to drive into work and everything like that I've just like not been able to get back onto my normal sleep schedule and now that it's getting darker it's even harder so I'm kind of like struggling with the mornings at the moment but it's nothing that a good old cup of tea can't solve so without further ado let's dive into today's tea vent calendar and see what we have whatever it is i'm just going to be grateful to have something warm because this morning it is so so cold I feel like it's getting colder every day but it is day number nine there we go found it day number nine doesn't want to open welcome surprise. I am actually loving this tea vent calendar, don't know if you can tell but it is literally the highlight of my day because it's just so much fun no matter what I get or whether I like it or not, it's just so much fun to open it up to a complete surprise and then taste it, see what I think and I know I'm going to love this one because I love Earl Grey. This one says, because it's Earl Grey strong, do you like your Earl Grey to come with some real oomph and wallop? Well, this one is the one for you. We've blended some powerful Assam and Rwandan with the more delicate Ceylon to give the perfect strong tea base to complement the zesty bergamot flavour. Maybe more of a duke than a lowly Earl. <laughs> Love it. So I'm going to go and make a cup of tea. I'm also going to make some breakfast. And like I said, it's freezing cold today, so I think it might well be a porridge day because the weather is so cold. And then before I start work this morning, I think I'm going to watch an episode of Nigella's um, most recent like Christmassy show and um, because she is just the like essence of Christmas to me and I really fancy it so without further ado 
tea time. <laughs> What time is it? It's tea taste test time. It's time to taste it. <laughs> Got myself my Earl Grey tea. I'm literally so excited about this. Mm. Now that is a really nice tea, however, what I will say is that because this is an Earl Grey Strong and there's like three different types of black tea mixed in with the Earl Grey flavours, it actually tastes more like an English breakfast tea than it does an Earl Grey because I think the strength of the black tea kind of overtakes the delicate flavours of the Earl Grey, but either way, I love an English breakfast tea and I love an Earl Grey and this is kind of like somewhere in between. So. I'm a big fan, definitely enjoying this one and I'm so happy that this was the tea today because it is exactly what I needed. I have my tea, I have my delicious bowl of porridge which I'm so excited about because as you probably know if you've seen my vlogs from a while ago or any of my what I eat in a day, so there was like a good two or three years of my life where porridge was the only breakfast I would eat, it was literally like my daily staple and then I kind of got out of the habit this year, started having other things like smoothie bowls and yogurts and all kinds of other stuff, but today I really fancied porridge and it smells delicious, it's got blueberries, peanut butter, cinnamon and maple syrup on and it smelled amazing along with this cup of tea and Nigella waiting for me on BBC iPlayer the world is basically my oyster <laughs> Well, it is lunchtime, and as you'll probably know from the last few Vlogmas vlogs, and this one actually, I have been loving going to all of the coffee shops and trying as many of the vegan friendly Christmas drinks as possible. And one that is always like a surefire, definitely easy to make vegan just by changing the milk is a gingerbread latte. But today I decided to mix it up a little bit and I have actually made my own vegan gingerbread latte complete with vegan whipped cream and I'm not saying that I'm as good as a barista but let's be honest we're all thinking it because oh look at this this looks incredible so if any, is want, if any of you are wanting to try this recipe I basically put in my milk frother oat milk I put in cinnamon, ginger, a little bit of mixed spice, and then a very, very generous glug of maple syrup. And then I froth that up. If you don't have a milk frother, you could just do the exact same thing just by literally putting the milk in a pan and heating it up with those spices. I do think that heating it up helps them to like, um, kind of like dissolve and not be as grainy because I do think when you put spices into coffee, at least when you're not in a coffee shop, it tends to be a little bit grainy and they don't like distribute quite as well, but I think heating it up definitely helps. I then actually didn't have any coffee granules, so I had to use a Nescafe um, oat milk like sachet, which kind of combines coffee with a little bit of oat milk powder, but I usually would have just used like normal ground coffee. Um, topped it off with boiling water, it was about half milk, half boiling water, then put the cream on and finally some cinnamon. So it looks incredible, it smells incredible, but the real test is how it tastes. So without further ado, let's give it a slurp. Wow. Oh my god, that is so good. I'm not just tooting my own horn, but actually now that I'm thinking about it, maybe using one of the like vegan Nescafe 
strips of like a coffee latte definitely gives it more of like a luxurious feel and also stops it from being too bitter. I'm so not a coffee person. Um, as you know, I obviously love tea and when I do drink coffee, it's usually one that is like doused in loads and loads and loads of syrup. So it's not too bitter and this one is perfect for my personal liking. So if you like creamy, milky, latte style coffees, then this recipe is definitely for you. I'm so impressed with myself. <laughs> So I'm gonna finish this. I felt inspired to create something after watching Nigella this morning because she just talks about food in the most amazing way. I feel like you can't watch Nigella without feeling just like so happy because she's just so wholesome. She loves food. She talks about the most simple meals, even like bread and butter in like the most like sexy, incredible way and she's just so wonderful and I think she's great. So she inspired me to create this gingerbread latte. I'm not even going to attempt to talk about it in a Nigella-esque way because I could never do her justice but what I will say is that this is a true delight to drink and I'm very glad I decided to make it. Excuse me, how is it actually now only 15 days until Christmas? That is beyond wild to me. It's literally just over two weeks now because today is the 10th of December and that's crazy. We're in double digits now and I cannot believe it. December is going so quickly. This whole year has just gone really quickly but December as always is literally like flying by. Either way, I'm having a great time. But as it is now Thursday, I'm gonna bring this Vlogmas vlog to an end. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I feel like I have no idea what even happened this week. It's gone so quickly, but I obviously started Writers and Lovers, the book swap I'm doing with M. And in my next Vlogmas vlog, which will be coming out on Sunday, I'm hoping to finish this book. I'm only 50 pages into it basically now, and there's just over 320. So I've still got a large chunk of this book, and that is what my next vlog is primarily going to be dedicated to. So I really hope you enjoyed this one. I would highly recommend trying out my um, gingerbread latte recipe because honestly, it was so, so good. I literally cannot express how highly I recommend recommend that you try it. But either way, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time.